Joe and Big Al spitball five different retirement plans with a little bonus comparison today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 434. Is Jaybird on track to retire with a decent nest egg? Should Ted and his wife use the retirement smile spending pattern and spend more early in retirement? Is it safe for Aaron to retire at age 59 and a half? How much can Carla convert to Roth for the most tax-efficient retirement withdrawal plan? Leo J. has Roth TSP retirement strategy questions, and Lynn suggests a super easy Roth conversion calculator, but Big Al's got an even easier idea. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joey Anderson CFP and Big Al Clopine CPA. We got a jam-packed show today. Uh, Andy's playing a little hurt. want to thank her for making all of this happen yeah i do too andy this um this is going over and above for our show and we really appreciate it hey i'm just actually trying to make it as easy on myself as possible if i had to do a compilation episode i'd be spending way more time on it so okay <laughs> I'll, i'm glad we could help you thank you we got a lot of uh a lot of work to do today so let's we uh, do let, let's jump right in uh hey ymyw this is jaybird from good old Pencil tucky. <laughs> that's Pencil a, that's tucky. That's, a, that's kind of a weird one. Pencil tucky. Pencil tucky. All I right. think that's just a nickname for Pennsylvania. Well, he's Jaybird. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's such a cool nickname, man. <laughs> just call me Joe Bird. J- yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I want to see if you guys had any suggestions for my wife and I since we're new listeners. All right. Welcome to the show. Uh, My wife drives a 2020 Volvo family wife uh, or family car, and I keep it classy with my 2014 Chevy Cruze. Uh, We have been enjoying all the commentary on the other guests and figured, hey, why not us? So we, what? They're both listening. Wow. How about if they do it at the dinner table? Amazing. (laughs) Light up a couple (laughs) candles, turn on a little YMYW. Or one of them says, honey, we're getting in the car. We're going for a drive. Where are we going? It doesn't matter. We're Pens- listening to YMYW. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Pens- <laughs> uh, we're both 34 years old, and we have somewhat of an opposite retirement setup, which I believe will only negatively affect us later in our retirement. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Wife makes $110,000 a year and contributes about 20% of her pre- to pre-tax 401k and gets 6% match. She also has an HSA, which she is the only member on and puts around $2,000 annually. Now we both contribute about $3,000 into our separate Roth IRA accounts, but that's due to vacation and home ownership of our four children. I make around 80 or $90,000 a year uh, with a contribution rate of 25% into my Roth 401k and have a 6% employer match. You keeping score here, Big Al? Yeah, I already, this is a lot. <laughs> no HSA. Because I pay for the family insurance plan for now. I think he's going to drop her. <laughs> it's got that in like parentheses. That's right. All right. Wifey, better. There's no explanation point. Yeah. There. It's but, not in all caps. So. Yeah. <laughs> Having informed you of how we save so far, we typically spend around eighty to $100,000 a year with the four children in today's dollars. Uh, We also contribute to uh, the PA 529 plans for all children with hopes of them using these accounts. Uh, With all of that information, I'm planning to work until 60, 65 as the wife is planning to retire a tad earlier. That's TBD. Uh, We currently have $100,000 in pre-tax 401ks, $100,000 in Roth 401k, $10,000 in Roth IRAs. My wife had $6,000 in an HSA and we have $5,000 $5,000 in a brokerage account. Uh, drinks of choice would be something light for the missus since breastfeeding was the choice here. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> that means you, you don't drink when you're breastfeeding or you try not to. All right. Something <laughs> along the lines of a twisted tea or white claw. All right. I've okay. Twisted tea and white claw. Uh, I would prefer a Guinness blonde or on a hot day. On the yard work, the good old Coors Latte. Okay. Yeah, you and I. We have one dog currently 10 years old. It's a rescue named Penny. Uh, she's a mixed breed, but overall, she's or family secured. I think that means our. our. Okay. Um, with all of that being said, 
what would your spitball look like from the crew? Are we on track to retire at a decent nest egg? Uh, should I have my wife contribute to after-tax dollars since we have the option in our employer plan? Should we do conversions and play with the taxes? I want to add our spending should drop once we become empty nesters to around $60,000, if that helps any. Thank you for your time, comments, and laughs so far. Best podcast by far. <laughs> That's great. Love the show. Right, right. C and J. All right. Okay. Jaybird. So I I did some math because there's a lot here. And I will I will tell our listeners. You did some preparation. Mm -hmm. Very good. It is if you can summarize these numbers for us instead of us doing percentages and blah blah blah. But I did it. I did it. So I, I did some math. You did I, a little work. Big took, L charges like five hundred bucks took, an hour. <laughs> took care of your thing, dude. <laughs> anyway. So wife saves with employer match about 29K. They put 6,000 into Ross between the two of them. He saves, um, Jaybird saves about 26,000. That's 61,000 saved. That's a ton. That's a ton. That's a, that's a lot. And so typically when you're saving that much, you're going to be fine. But <laughs> but just to do the math. So you, you got, we'll call it 210,000 right now between 401ks and IRAs. Um and 61,000 of savings per year. I just ran this at 7%. Okay. Okay. 25 years, you get five, you have 5 million, 4% distribution rates, 200,000 without regard to any future social security. And 200,000 of uh, spending in today's dollars at a 3% inflation rate is 95, right? So they, 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 they want to spend around 80 to 90. So check. Now, on the other hand, you work 30 years. This is interesting how much different it, work, it's, it comes out when you work a few more years because of the compounding. Right, five more years? Mm -hmm, five years, yep. So now instead of 5 million, you got 7.4 million. Okay, and now you get about 300,000 of distribution versus 200,000. So those extra five years- Gives you another $100,000 of income. That's right. And in current dollars, that's 143,000. So uh, Jaybird, you decide how long you work, want to work. Either way, it looks good. And I'm not even including social security. So it looks great. Right. So then looking at playing with the taxes and, and things of that nature, the, when you start compounding and you're saving that much money, um, and given your current income, is I would want to go... To, as much tax free as I possibly can, or at least split it between the spouses, one tax free and one pre tax. Because it, as you can see, the compounding effect over 10, 20, 30 years in this case, you're going to have $7 million. Um, hypothetically, yeah. spitballing here, right? right? There's it's no guarantee. <laughs> this, this is just complete BS. You said you're going to have. <laughs> as soon as that came out of my mouth, I just hear compliance, just right. Compliance, just flashing red light. Yeah, yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, but what, what Al and I find today is that people that were good savers 10, 20, 30 years ago, all of their money's in a retirement account and they're stuck with a huge tax bill each and every year. Right. And so if you could catch this way ahead of the game, as Jay Bird is doing and his wife, of looking at a tax diversification strategy, or at least making sure that they're not going to be fully loaded up on pre-tax, I think is the right way to look at this. So you want to look at it every year. What is your income? What is your tax bracket? Tax brackets are going to go up in the next few years. So maybe until now, until 2026, you go all pre-tax because you're probably right there in the 22% tax bracket. Once that changes back to 25, but then you want to play with pre-tax and after. So Thanks for uh, listening, and thanks for the compliment. We got, uh, let's see, Teddy here. Joe, Big Al, great fan of the YMYW podcast. Sipping on a little Honey Jack. You like, Thinking, you like Honey Jack? Honey Jack. No, I don't know. I've never tasted Honey Jack. <laughs> what is Honey Jack? It's probably Jack Daniels Honey. With honey, I guess. I used to, okay. used to drink Jack in college, and that's probably the last time <laughs> I did. Thinking of... I'm ready uh, financially to retire. So he's got a little honey jack. You can see him. He's just yeah. sitting there. Ted, he's like, you know what? And, you know, he sips that jack and he's going, this is mm, looking pretty good. God, this is so good. I would <laughs> love to have honey jack every single day. <laughs> I, th I think I can. <laughs> I'm doing some numbers here. I'm going to have a couple more sips and then I'm going to write in. <laughs> um, all right. Hey. So he's 58, wife is 52, kids yeah. graduated and working. Uh, combined income is $260,000. They have no pensions. Uh, estimated Social Security is going to be $3,000 a month at age 70. 
All right, so he's got another 12 years to bridge that gap. He's got annual expenses of $110,000. He's got a house that's paid for, zero debt. Investments, $3.1 million. No wonder why he's drinking a little honey jack. Why, why not, why right? Not? I mean, be like, <laughs> can afford it. Woo. Yeah, <laughs> love my honey jack. Uh, he's got 200000 in Roth, $1 million in tax deferred, and a couple million dollars in after tax. 60-40 allocation. Are we both ready to retire financially? Um, should we spend more during the early retirement based on retirement smile spending pattern? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what the hell does that mean? I think it means that's when you have fun, when you're younger years retirement. Is that like the go-go, yo-yo? I thought it meant that you spend more at the beginning of retirement and at the end of the retirement. So you have a dip in the amount uh, of spending in the middle of your retirement. Oh, look at that. That oh, sounds right. Smile? <laughs> I don't know. I've been doing this 20 some odd years. I've never heard. Yeah. Of but yeah, I think you're... Is that like the yo-yo years, yeah, and the fro-go years, it's the, go <laughs> it's the go, go years, the slow go years, and then no go no, years no, no, yeah. or you're not going anywhere. Oh, God. <laughs> um, all right. So smile. So you spend a lot and then it dips down and then you spend more because of healthcare issues. And yeah. Then you die. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. Right. That actually makes sense. So a little smile spending patterns. Um, other than Roth conversion and medical insurance, anything else we should watch out for? Uh, drive a Tesla Model Y. Thank you. Got it. All right. Um, four times three is well, 120. Yeah, right. So distribution rate. It should be about 3%. Yeah, three and a half. So th three and a half percent distribution rate. Social Security is coming down the line, 58 that's probably it's, pretty close. It's, yeah, it's a little tight. It's tight. A little tight. It's all sequence of returns. So yeah, what, true. what sequence of returns means is that it depends on what the market does when you retire, especially at that age, because you're retiring pretty young and your wife is especially young and she's probably going to live a lot longer um, than than Ted, uh, yeah. just because women live longer than men. Right. Um, I've never met Ted or his wife, so I'm just spitballing <laughs> just, say, just saying. You've already... <laughs> <laughs> and Ted's going, I would, I'm the one that wrote it, and you're already killing me off. Well, she's 52. Let's uh, say you retired 52. No, I, I agree. Well, they have like a 50 year retirement. I know. Well, I guess this is the way I think about distribution rates, and this is just rule of thumb. This is, this is no guarantee. There's just a reality check, right? So 4% distribution rate at 65, three and a half, maybe at 60. So what he's saying is like, you don't want to take out any more than 4%. So once That's you right. reach age 65, you don't want to take on any more than four. So 4% or less. That's right. And then when you're when you're 60, I would say three and a half percent. When you're younger than that, maybe three-ish. Yeah. Right. And if you take the average of the two of them, it's like 55 or so. So so yeah, it's it's a little tight. I mean, it's it's not too far off there. But okay, so uh, think of it like this. He's he wants to spend hundred and ten thousand dollars. He's not gonna have any fixed income for 12 years. Right. Right. That, that's my concern because it's retiring early. So 110 times 12 is a big number. Yeah. It's almost half of his, his total nest egg that he would have to. So he needs a certain target rate of return on the overall money. He does. Right. Because his distribution, he's going to be taking on a million plus before any type of Social Security kicks in. Then there's going to be another several years before his wife's Social Security kicks in. Right. That's true. So but the sequence of return risk is is extremely important to understand when you retire young because if the market takes a dip and he's taking one hundred and ten thousand dollars out of the overall account and let's say the market drops 10 20 percent and then all of a sudden that distribution rate that you're talking about now is not three and a half percent anymore it's a lot higher just because the he's pulling more from a lower balance so you want to make sure that you understand an income strategy and where are you going to be pulling the dollars from? And then what is the taxation of that? So he's diversified from a tax perspective because he's got a lot of money in after tax. Yeah, I, I like that. So in other words, he's he's going to have control over his taxes to to a large extent. And 60-40, theoretically, this could work. It's just that you're right, Joe. Like, let's say we have the next three years of a real down market. Then, uh, or flat. Then or flat, and then Teddy, you're, you're going back to work at least part time, right? Because you're taking almost four hundred thousand dollars out of the over account in three years, and the right. market's flatter down, yeah, in that three year time period. 
Yeah. It's like, okay, I have no growth. Now that 3 million is something significantly less. And I still have seven years to go to pull out another $110,000. Right. I, I, the, the numbers still might work out, but guess what? The, the, the emotions take over at that point right. because it's like, oh my gosh, what did, what did we do? We retired earlier, this or that, or he might just be so drunk on honey Jack. He's like, I'm not even going to look at it. doesn't my matter. Accounts. I'm not going to do a smile. Strategy. I'm not going to do a smile. I'm going to do just a, <laughs> just a half a smile. <laughs> anyway, th this could work, and and it's really, really and close. You're really close, Ted. And if you want to do this, just have a backup plan. In other words, can you can you work part time? Can you do a side hustle, make some income some other way, just in case the market doesn't cooperate in those first few years? Yeah. Congratulations, though. I mean, three and a half million bucks at yeah. 58 years old, 52. It's actually um, fantastic. Yeah, you guys have done a wonderful job. And you know what? If you you don't like your job, punch. Yeah, right. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. So yeah, Marble Mouth is. I'm, I'm ready yeah, to go. I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> get the hell out. We're on a roll here with these great retirement spitball questions today. So send in yours and let's keep the momentum going. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to go to the show notes. Then click Ask Joe and Al on air. Tell the fellows all the relevant details, like your name, your ages, and your location. The names can be whatever you like. The ages and location need to be real so that you get a more accurate spitball. Also, when do you and your spouse, if you have one, want to retire? How much do you think you'll need to spend annually in retirement? A lot of people leave that out. How much do you make and save now? And how much do you already have saved? And in what types of accounts? Are they Roths, 401ks, brokerage accounts, etc.? And you want to provide any other details that are relevant to your financial situation. Then, to help Joe better visualize the whole situation, tell us where or how you listen to YMYW, what you drink, because you know that's important to Joe, and anything else you want to share, because this show would not be a show without you. Let's get on with the retirement spitball analyses. Aaron writes in from Philly. Goes, Joe and Big Al, love the show. You guys really cracked me up. Been listening for two years. Really appreciate the information. All right, well, two years. Um, I'm 56. My wife's 52, hoping to retire and around 59 and a half or sooner in planning life expectancy of 85 for me and 90 for my wife. Have about $3.6 million accumulated for me and my wife to take us through the retirement years. Yeah, that's a big wallet on air, too. Sure is. $3.6 million. Congrats at 56. 56. Okay. All right. Tax deferred accounts. He's got two point two million. He's got four hundred thousand in a Roth, and after tax, about a million. No debt. The house is fully paid. I earn about four hundred or one hundred forty thousand dollars per year. My wife is currently not working. I am in the twenty two or twenty four percent tax bracket that my wife is no longer working. My current plan is to use my cash position to build a second home that will, that will ultimately retire in in two to five years. Uh, this plan would leave me with about $3 million for retirement, plus what I would net from my current house sale in five years. Let's call it 400000 Right. All right. I expect approximately $3,000 per month in Social Security when I take it at age 65 or 67. I would like to have about $130,000 per year um, I save about $20,000 a year. My 401k contributions to Roth matched in tax deferred. Questions. You think that 59 and a half is a safe retirement age, or do you think I should hold out a few more years to ensure safety? I'm not actively converting any of my 2.2 million in tax deferred IRA funds, given that I feel that I have plenty of time to make those conversions from age of 60-ish to RMD age. I'm concerned with the tax implications of large RMDs, All right? Is this the right strategy? Should I convert some now or should I wait until my earned income drops significantly when I retire? Do you think these balances will support $135,000 to $140,000 retirement spending or should I plan to cut back? Do you think these balances can self-insure long-term care or do you think I should get insurance there? I love a spitball in the situation, anything that I might have missed. Drink of choice is a little lemon ginger kombucha. Kombucha. Oh, yeah, kombucha. Haven't been drinking for a few years. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to the kombucha. 
I drank. Um, oh, I drive a 2013 Toyota Sienna. Yes, the van. Van life. life. Okay, yeah, killing it. <laughs> and my wife drives a Honda Ridge Ridge Line. Hmm. Never heard of that. What does that look like? Is that like a? Is that another van? <laughs> Thanks for all. It's a pickup truck. Oh, ah, okay. Well, the Honda Ridge Line. Okay. Thanks for all the consideration of these facts. Well, while you were talking, I just did a little math. So if he thinks he's going to be 3.4 million after he buys the second home or builds the second home. And then I just did, uh, I, I just did five years at 7% adding 20 grand a year. I don't know if that's right, but I get to 4.9 million. Right. And so if he wants to spend what, 135 into, into 4.9 million, that's a 2.7% distribution rate. If, if my, assumptions are correct that looks pretty good so that's uh you'll be you'll be around 60 um your wife's a little bit younger but that's a that's a below three percent I, I think i'm i'm good with that distribution rate based upon what i think i know about you so he makes one hundred forty thousand dollars a year he saves twenty thousand dollars of that a year yeah so I'm, 120 so his taxable income i'm guessing is 90 yeah right so he's right at the top of the 12. Yep. Um, I would do conversions now um, because most of the dollars that you have is in tax deferred accounts. Right. You got, well, he's got a million dollars in after tax. I thought it was 450. So he's got 3.2, 3.4. How much does he have? Well, he'll he'll have 3.4 plus growth. Uh, so it'll it'll eventually be about 4.9. So, but he's building this house, right? So he's got to sell his current house. Right. Um, he says he's going to get 400 from that. So he's, he's spending about 600,000 for the house. Just looking at the math, but he doesn't have a house now. No, oh, he does. He's, he's got, it. he's going to sell it for 400. But what, or if he already has two, three, he's got 3.6 million now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so it, to but, build the house is going to be a lot more expensive than his current house. I, I take yeah. it because he's going to lose 600,000 plus he's going to sell his house, but then he's going to net back 400,000. Well, here's what I'm thinking. He's going to, he's going to, he's at 3.6. He's going to spend 600,000 for the home of 3 million, but th then he's going to sell his home and add another 400. Got it. That's the assumption I took. Okay. All right. So I would look at <clears throat> from a distribution rate, I think, yeah, it, does he have enough assets to retire at 60? I would say, yes, you're pretty close. You would want to be careful there again. Yeah. Uh, but there's, there's a little bit more room safety margin than the other uh, uh, listener that was closer to 3.5%. Yep. Um, and he's retiring at 60 and she will be like 58 versus he was 58 and 52. Yeah um so she'll, yeah she, no she'll be 54 or 55 maybe. almost identical i know it's kind of almost the same case it's just that they have more assets i think to work with maybe yeah but what i don't like about aaron's situation is that he's got a lot more money in tax deferred accounts than the other guy agreed and so so the roth conversions are more important way more important now because you want to get the compounding tax free and he's still working so he's got cash flow to potentially yeah. pay the tax including whatever current contributions you're making those should be roth for sure yep because you're in a fair you're in a relatively lower tax bracket you know right so right. I like Roth. I like Roth conversions now. I like Roth conversions when you're going to have compound tax-free dollars because the majority of the liquid assets that you currently have is in retirement accounts. So if you want to spend $120,000 and if you have to pull from the retirement accounts, you're still going to have to pay tax. You'll probably, you'll definitely be in a lower tax bracket, but you still want to do conversions then too, right? Yeah, right. Because this will continue to compound over time. And then, right, I would be worried. And if tax rates go up, I think 22% is a is a reasonable tax bracket to yeah, pay. I think it's a great rate. And and so he's got a million dollars of after tax. So he's got money to pay the tax, right? So th this is a <laughs> this is a perfect case for Roth conversions. Go Roth in your 401k right now and yes, it's looking pretty good on the distribution rate. So I think you can I mean if you want to work a couple more years, every every year you work, you're even that much safer. So I'm not going to tell you not to. Yeah. But I think you could retire at 59 and a half. Right. At 60, you know, look at the numbers and you're like, okay, yeah, we're good. If if the distribution rate is, you know, 2% or lower, I'd be like, okay, well, here, what work is absolutely optional. Yeah, right. So if someone kind of rubs you the wrong way, 
Yeah, you just walk out of the office. <laughs> That's it. You baby. get in that you get in that minivan and <laughs> pour yourself a little kombucha <laughs> and say so long. That's right. So when can you say so long? Take our retirement pop quiz and find out. Go to the podcast show notes to test your knowledge and see just how retirement ready you really are. Also, download the Retirement Readiness Guide for free to learn secrets to controlling your taxes in retirement, creating income to last a lifetime, making the most of your retirement investing strategy, and much more. These plays will boost your retirement readiness despite the uncertainties of market volatility, inflation, rising health healthcare costs, the future of Social Security and Medicare, et cetera, et cetera. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app, go to the show notes, take that retirement pop quiz, and download the Retirement Readiness Guide for free. Got Carla from New York City. Hey, Joe, big gal. And Andy, I've been listening to your podcast for about a year, and I'm finally sending my questions. Okay. Well, yeah, let's see, she's patient. Yeah. She wants to ask just the right question, learn how to phrase them. Yep. Learn what to tell us. All right. hundred bucks. It's about a Roth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where am I out of here? I'm usually listening while uh, taking a walk or riding my bike. I wonder if she wears the bike gear. Oh, I, I bet she does. Anyone that well, rides a bike all the time <laughs> has, the, has the gear. Uh, your show is one of my favorites. Well, thank you, Carla. Uh, my fur, preferred drink lately is a nice glass of wine. But I also enjoy cocktails and beer every now and again. All right. Let's party. Yeah. I drive an old Toyota that is still kicking. I like to get a hybrid or electric car in the near future. I have a complicated financial situation and would love for one of your great spitballs. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay. 62 single with one college age kid. I live in New York City. I just recently retired and I'm getting a retirement incentive of five years, half pay. $50,000. I plan to take Social Security at 70. As for my assets, I have a net worth of about $4.1 million, not including my apartment, which is currently valued about $750,000 and fully paid. Look at Carla. Yeah, this a is big, a big ass wallet. Wonderful. My retirement accounts currently have $1.85 million, of which about $500,000 is in a stable value fund. I have $1.3 million in a brokerage account, three hundred fifty dollars in an inherited stretch IRA. From which I'm taking RMDs, $175,000 in a non inherited variable annuity, mistake, <laughs> <laughs> and $180,000 in a Roth. My allocation is 75% equities, 20% fixed income, 5% alternative investments. College tuition funds are held separately in 529 accounts and I bonds. You can, you know, when um, like really smart, intelligent people write in, Right. They use equities and fixed income. Right. They they know what they're talking about. You know, about. instead of like stocks and bonds. Yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, Carla's not only bright, but she's listened for a year. Yeah. So she knows these terms. Notes. Yeah, right. Feel honored. Yeah, me too. I like to live on about $120,000 a year. I will keep my employer medical plan for me and my child, which costs about $7,000 a year for the next five years, which I'll switch to Medicare. I plan to travel and would like to budget about twenty thousand dollars a year on trips. So twenty thousand on top of the one twenty. Is that what you're... I'm guessing? That yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to do some Roth conversions. There it is. Okay, you you predicted. <laughs> I'm thinking that I can do those between the ages of sixty five and seventy five before RMDs. I'd love to hear your suggestion for a tax efficient withdrawal plan in how much to convert to Roth. From which account should I create a paycheck and how much should I keep in cash for emergencies? Any suggestions on what I should do with those annuities? Thank you so much for advance for answering my questions. Best. Wow. There's a lot there. There's a lot of meat on that bone. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So she's got 4 million bucks. She's yeah. She's spending 120. I'll, I'll start with that. All right. 162 and single. She wants to take yeah. Social Security at 70. So we got an eight year gap now. Yeah. But 120 thousand into 4.1 million is a 2.9 distribution rate that's 62 bingo i'm totally fine with that all right so here's your first eight years you're going to take from your non-qualified account because she has how much in the non-qualified account she's got 1.3 million brokerage okay. you got 1.3 million dollars so you're going to pay very little tax from age 62 to your age 70 right so you would live off of that 
and then I would do conversions to the top of at least the 12 and or the 22% tax bracket. Well, she makes 50,000 already, right? Oh, she's get this incentive. Get, yeah, five right. years of half. So, so I think you convert up to twenty two at least for sure, if not the twenty four. So twenty two percent tax bracket, and then look at the twenty four. The twenty four is a big bracket. It is. So I would try to keep as little tax on my tax return as possible. You got your incentive pay for five years, so you're going to be sixty seven um, when that goes away. You won't. She wants to spend one hundred twenty plus another twenty, so one forty. Yeah, one forty. So she needs ninety thousand dollars. So you pull $90,000 from the 1.3 that you have in brokerage accounts, and then you do conversions. So then she also has a stretch IRA annuity um, for which I'm taking RMDs. So she's got $350,000 there. So I'm guessing she's probably taking, what, $30,000 maybe a year from that? Yeah. So that's going to be taxable as well as the 50. So wh sure. whatever other income that you need, you take from the brokerage account and then convert to the 22 or maybe into the 24. Yeah, I agree with that. So then she's got the old annuity. Mistake. $175,000. We need to know what the basis is. Yeah. So a few things that you could do. You could blow out of that because it's LIFO tax treatment. So whatever the basis is, is going to come out tax-free, but it, that's the last thing to come out. So all of the earnings will come out first, which is going to be taxed at ordinary income rates. So... You have to look at what your tax bracket is, and then maybe you slowly bleed that out. You kind of think of it almost as a Roth conversion. So you take it out. You're going to take the earnings out. It's going to be taxed at ordinary income rates, and then you can reinvest that into a brokerage account, and then you would be subject to capital gains tax thereafter. Yeah, after, yeah. You could annuitize it, and then you're going to get a pro rata income stream from that. So you're going to get part basis and part earnings. So I don't know what the basis and the earnings ratio is. Sure. Uh, that's something you could do maybe after the $50,000 of um, your your severance pay is over to give you a little bit more fixed income. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because that's probably going to be the most tax efficient way to get it out. Right. Um, and if she's she's got plenty of other assets, the assets can continue to grow and you just build a higher floor. Maybe you do that yeah. um, or you just leave it alone and just have it build and then you blow up your kids because yeah, yeah. they're going to pay a, a ton of tax. Or if you don't like the annuity, you could you could uh, roll it into another annuity. Yeah, yeah, but the taxes still. I mean, if it's a high cost variable annuity or something like that, you could roll it into something that's yeah, very low cost. That's what I'm saying. Ten, a 1035 uh, exchange for an annuity, you can do that. That's that'd be another option. Yeah, but so the way this works is as so Joe mentioned, if you if you annuitize it, if you take a payment stream for life, and let's say let's say right now a half and half. Half and half. Half half is your cost basis and half is gain. So as you take money out, five thousand comes out, you pay tax on twenty five hundred. The other one is return of capital. So that's pro rata. If you blow it out, then half of it's tax because you blew the whole thing out. If you just start haphazardly taking amounts here and there, it's all taxable until you use up that first half. So that that's how to think about this. Yeah. Um Done a great job, Carla. Fantastic. Yeah, congratulations. Um, how much should I keep in cash for emergencies? Well, you got plenty of liquid assets, right? And if she's at 75, 35% now, she doesn't need a ton of the overall portfolio to live off of because she's got $50,000 of severance pay. Plus, her Social Security is going to come in. She only wants to spend about 140. Then she's got this inherited IRA. You know, I don't know, maybe $100,000, $200,000 max. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I do at least a year, 120. I probably, if it were me, I'd probably do at least 200 just for safety. Yeah. You, you got you got plenty here. You don't need to invest. Right. All you got $4 million, right. probably a couple hundred thousand dollars sitting in cash because maybe you want to go on a nicer vacation. Maybe yeah. you want to get that really fancy electric car. Yeah. And then you just go in and pay cash. Yeah. But maybe one of the most important points now is don't wait on Roth conversions and do not wait on travel. Travel now if you want to. Oh, yeah. Man, that just came back from Fiji. Yes. And I wholly, <laughs> wholly recommend traveling. Where's the next trip? You leaving next week? Uh, <laughs> next month, going back to Hawaii. All right. We got, let's go to Jay in San Diego, page nine. Okay. Good morning. I enjoy your show. But I would like to get a question answered and maybe a little advice. Jay, you went to the wrong place. <laughs> we don't give advice here. Uh, we spitball. I'm 44 years old and I have worked 
as a federal law enforcement officer for 16 years, the earliest I can redraw, uh, retire and draw my uh, income from my TSP without penalty, as you may be aware, the law changed for Leos a while back. Is that age 50? Leos, law enforcement officer. I figured. Okay. Like it. All right. Um, I like that's a good acronym. It is. I'm I'm a part of the Leo group. Yeah, I'm a badass Leo. <laughs> yeah, out of my way. Better do what I say. Um, I will have 23 years of service in. I have about $280,000 in my traditional TSP. I opened up a Roth TSP about a year ago, and it only has $20,000 in it. Here are my questions. Um, if I do retire at 50, I know I can start collecting from my traditional TSP, but can I withdraw my TSP Roth? The answer is yes. Um, all of the information that I found states I have to wait until 59 and a half to withdraw penalty free from the Roth, which seems odd to me. I believe if I can withdraw from the traditional TSP, then I should be able to withdraw from the Roth TSP as well. But I can't find that in writing. So he's a Leo. He needs the stuff in writing. Right. Uh, secondly, do you re recommend putting my money into the Roth or the traditional TSP at this point? I personally like the idea of maxing out the Roth because it's my understanding there's no capital gains tax when I withdraw it from the retirement. Thank you in advance, and I hope to hear the answers and conversation on your show. Have a great week, and thank you. All right. Thanks, Jay. Very polite. Leo. Yes. Um, hate to run into him without answering a all, TSP question. All the questions. <laughs> I, I, I hope I don't have to answer any other types of questions from <laughs> <laughs> Jay in a dark room with a, a yeah. light on me. Um, yeah, Roth TSP, standard TSP, 50 years old. That's your final answer. That's my final answer. Yeah. I, I actually don't know the answer, so I'm not going to opine or unopine. Yeah, how about if I'm wrong? <laughs> just, just say we think. <laughs> He's going to come and... He's, He's gonna... He lives in San Diego, I know, too. I know. He's, uh, Jay, Jay, this is what we think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to put it in writing. <laughs> um, hey, Andy and the guys, I really enjoyed the podcast and have been listening for a while. For Joe's benefit, I'll say I'm a longtime listener, but won't provide any other details. Oh, she's private. For Joe's benefit. Yeah, because you always want to know the details. But she's a longtime listener. Okay. I'll just say I'm a long time, but I'm not going to provide anything. You're not getting any more out of me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all you get. It's not, or I'm a long time listener, but go pound sand. <laughs> you want to know what I drive? I, Forget go it. Go pound sand. What, what I drink? Right? Not, yeah, not it's your business. <laughs> you want to know what I'm doing right now? Go F yourself. <laughs> <What? No. laughs> we just took a turn for the worst. Oh, my net worth is far under your usual collar. There will be no flexing here. Got it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, there's a lot of flexors out there. Right we do in. get it. We do get a bunch of flexors. <laughs> they they start off. My, well, I got eight million dollars. My, my name is Peter, and I got eight million in IRA. <laughs> and then there's a long dissertation. <laughs> oh, you just want to come out hot, don't it, you, you, Peter? Do. All right. But I've learned so much, and with the few shekels I have, I'm trying to take care of it responsibly. I don't have a question. Okay. Sounds good. So you wanted to come in. You don't want to tell us anything. <laughs> you don't have a quick question. <laughs> you don't have a question. Um, yeah. But what do you do have? Let's see here. Um, I did come across a resource uh, that will calculate Roth conversion taxes with a very simple input. All right. Okay. Cool. It's... Um, just on the Schwab website. Schwab, okay. I'm just going to a little Roth IRA conversions. Compliments of my buddy, Chucky S. Sorry about the ginormous link, but don't know how to make it shorter. Um, okay, Andy's note. I shortened it. <laughs> See that? <laughs> okay. I hope this helps some people. My most pertinent info. Oh, now she's giving oh, so now, she, <laughs> now she feels wow. better about everything. Just <laughs> All right. My most pertinent info is I drive a 2007 Prius for my long commute to work, but for fun, I have a 2010 Mazda Miata. Oh, wow, yeah. she's got two cars. Mazda Miata, that's a short little guy with yeah, a little... That's a little one, A right? little convertible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a college roommate had that thing. Got it. Yeah. Did you fit in it? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, with the top down? Yeah. yeah. The top had to go down. Yeah. Our pets include two fancy schmancy Devon Rex cats and some hens all right 
My favorite drink is all of them. Oh, okay. oh Lynn gets along well with Joe already. We're starting uh, to learn a lot about Lynn now. All right. Thank you for all the inter- entertaining information. Don't forget to give Andy that raise. Kind of regards, Lynn. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Okay. Oh, so, Lynn. so she's got a... Uh, My favorite drink is all of them. <laughs> she hasn't found one she didn't like. Oh, no. it's that one writer who was like, I'll drink everything short of gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that one that was siphoning something and we just assumed it was gasoline. Oh, no, yeah, that was that other guy. Yeah, I know, but a different one. Oh, boy. Um, just so what? Okay, we're going to give our <clears throat> our listeners a little um, little treat from Charles Schwab. Is that yeah, what we're yeah, doing? That's well, what so we're does, doing. does this make sense to you? I've got it up on screen so that you can see all of the information that it asks for. And okay. So so does this make sense for um, putting in your, your details to, to get how you should do your Roth conversions? I doubt it, but let's see. <laughs> Combined value of all of your non IRAs, non Roth IRAs. Yep. Okay. Okay. Would you like to convert a filing status, estimated taxable income? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably better than nothing. Here's a simpler way go to your tax rate, go to your tax return, look at your taxable income, and then find the taxable income on the tax table and 24%, 22%, that's your number. Federal rate, it's do the same for state. Yep. So, or you but, can try to figure out the calculator. Yeah, go with the calculator. Yeah. Lynn gave it to us. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Andy. Yeah, um, thank you. That's, that's it for us. we got to get out of here. show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll see you next time. In the big old derails today, we've got breastfeeding, Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey, and Fire, what sports Joe will allow his kids to play, Narcos, Arkansas, and secret Fiji ceremonies. So stick around. Help new listeners find YMYW by leaving your honest reviews and ratings for Your Money, Your Wealth in Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app that accepts them like Amazon, Audible, Cast. Box, Good Pods, Pandora, Player FM, Podcast Attic, Pod Chaser, Pod Friend, Pod Knife, Podcast Republic, Spotify, and Stitcher. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call us at 888-994-6257 to schedule your free financial assessment in person at one of our seven offices around the country or online at a date and time convenient for you no matter where you are. Chance are one of the experienced financial professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure will be able to identify strategies that will help you create a more successful retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. What? That means you, you don't drink when you're breastfeeding or you try not to. But was, okay, sounds good. Congratulations. <laughs> what were you thinking? I don't know. You are thinking something else. I, you? you know, <laughs> I was, I, well, first blush here, you know, I don't prepare. Yeah, there were two. It's like, since breastfeeding was the choice here, okay? <laughs> I wouldn't say no to a Jack and Coke. Right. But I wouldn't go out and purchase it. Got it. Got it. If someone handed it to you. Yeah, I kind of like different types of bourbons, but, you know, Jack is good. Yeah, yeah. Honey Jack. Jack Daniels actually makes a Tennessee honey, which is a blend of their Tennessee whiskey and a unique honey liqueur of their own making. Yeah. There you go. Is it kind of a yellow bottle, I'm guessing, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Hypothetically? Yeah. (laughs) Hypothetically. I don't think compliance is going to care about this one. (laughs) Oh, Honey Jack. (laughs) I've had Jack fire. Oh, that's Jack Fire, a little spicy. Oh, yeah, that's like a fireball. <laughs> I, I could see myself buying a bottle of that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yet, though. A little van life. I got to get a van. Well, you, you need one now. Yeah, no. With those little kids. Yeah, I'm going to have to take them to soccer pretty soon. Oh, my. That's, th- that is definitely off the table. <laughs> no, no, I guarantee you, it's not off the they table. They can play any other sport, not the, soccer. No, they're playing soccer. Yeah, they're golf, <laughs> baseball. <laughs> Only the sports Joe likes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, interesting emails today. Yeah, I've got a lot. The law enforcement agent. Right. It's probably going to come and find me because I <laughs> hopefully I give him the right information. <laughs> I've been watching Narcos. No, that sounds like you're kind of shit. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I just rewatched it. 
I've watched it before, but then I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm going to watch this again. I'm like absolutely hooked again. Are you really? Yep. I'm almost yeah. done though with Narcos Mexico. Yeah. Season three. Okay. And yeah. A little El Chapo. Got it. Got it. So, but yeah, my dreams have been quite interesting. You're dreaming Narcos? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy. Are they coming after you? They're coming after yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah. So Al's been in Fiji. I had a wonderful trip to Arkansas. I, I know you did. How was that? I'm like, I don't know how, uh, how this you happens. go to Fiji, you go to Hawaii. Right? You go to Arkansas. I, yeah, I go to Arkansas. People call me Cliff. <laughs> Cliff I got mar- Marble Mouth. <laughs> well, the only I did have one bad comment about my toupee. Which, That's not even a toupee. That's which I don't have. Like I, hair. I've got full hair. Yeah. Anyway, so as far as Fiji goes, so we did a seven-day cruise on Captain Cook Cruises. Oh, wow. Sounds really exciting. It was good. Uh so first of all, the islands are beautiful. Did you gamble? No. Did you drink? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> Joe's okay with it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it, well, what do you do on a cruise ship if you don't? Is there like shows? It's a, it's a no. It's a tiny. It, we had less than a hundred passengers. Ooh, so, so, so this, this is yeah, super expensive. This sounds like <laughs> yeah, it was like three dollars. <laughs> Actually, they paid me to come up because oh, okay. they didn't want it to clear empty. <laughs> No, it was um, give some financial advice to the other crew members. Yeah, just yeah. do a little, yeah, a little, uh, a little seminar. A couple things: snorkeling is fantastic, diving is fantastic, and maybe most of all is the people are so friendly. And you've heard that about Fiji, happiest place on earth. And I would say, from what I saw, yeah. And they like kava. You ever heard of kava? Ka- no, never. Ka- kava. No, I don't think I've ever heard the phrase uh, "happiest place on earth." Yeah, well, I that's, thought that was Disneyland. That's. Is when you're talking countries. Got it. Now, if you're talking in the United States, sure. All right. I'll give you that. Anyway, that's that's what the commercial says. But anyway, the kava ceremony is not to be missed. Although your 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 mouth can go numb. It's a ceremony. Yeah, it's a ceremony where you sit around and you drink this kava root juice. Oh, it doesn't taste that good. Oh. However, but then your is mouth- it like hallucinogenic or something? It's it's, 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 it's dark <laughs> No, no, it's a it's a light narcotic. Oh boy. <laughs> So we we have the drawing ring. <laughs> no, no, Let's that talk about narcos here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should watch it. No. <laughs> now that I'm into it. <laughs> no, it's real. It's real light. It does kind of make you happy. And the natives all do it. And we had. I've done it twice. Had really good time doing that. Wow. How about that? Big Al. Getting into the Cabo. <laughs> What's that ceremony? <laughs> That's right. Uh, 